I want you to imagine with me a world where cars will no longer need drivers. In fact, you'll be able to just chill in your car, relax, watch a movie, and eventually even fall asleep. Sounds a little too far-fetched? Well, think again. Tesla's unsupervised FSD is already hitting the factories. As you've seen before, these cars are coming out from the factory and driving themselves to their appropriate stations or parking spaces. And in fact, now Tesla is going to be taking advantage of the streets of San Francisco and Austin, Texas. Today, we're gonna to be taking you behind the scenes of Tesla's unsupervised FSD where it's at and where it's currently going and what we're gonna see in the near future. Tesla's biggest bet yet is to launch the world's first robo taxi network and how it could essentially change the game. You see, Tesla's journey didn't start with autonomy. It actually started with trying to make EVs better than internal combustion cars. So what they did is they designed these EVs, but then later on they said, hey, you know what? Why don't we add something else to it? and not just an EV, but one that can drive itself. But from the very beginning, Elon's vision was to have autonomy for all cars. In fact, Elon said in 2016 that all the cars being produced today will have the software and hardware needed to have full autonomy. As ambitious as it sounds, in reality, it was a lot tougher than they thought. So over the years, Tesla had to shift gears and kind of remove sensors, ultrasonic sensors, not do the LiDAR or radar or anything, and they just kind of switched fully to a camera-based full autonomy operation. And now about a decade later, they got millions of miles of data collected for the full AI, full autonomy system that they always wanted. Now you're probably thinking, why San Francisco and why Austin? You see, San Francisco and Austin give a complexity of streets, pedestrians, pedestrians, construction zones, there's always something happening and always something changing. In theory, if Tesla's full autonomy can perform in San Francisco or Austin, Texas, most likely it's gonna do really well throughout the US and potentially even the world. And let's not forget the constant competition with Waymo and Cruise in San Francisco, LA and Austin. It's definitely gonna help Tesla ramp up the tech and make things just a little bit near perfect. At the heart of it, Tesla has billions of miles in the neural network of collected data, and they're able to look and study that and predict it a lot better when the AI is working with all the cameras around the car. It's one thing to have a car kind of follow code and follow a path and have some like, you know, little bumpers or safety rails, but this actually predicts and learns the roads better than ever. So what's the master plan of full autonomy with Tesla's FSD? Rumors have said that the code name is called Rodeo or Rodeo, wherever you live, it may differ. But you could think of it as the first initial full autonomy, 300 plus drivers or so out on the road, whether it's San Francisco or Austin, Texas. And what they're gonna do is initially, they're gonna have people in the driver's seats and they're gonna tell them, you know, hey, don't engage unless it's an emergency, kind of what we have now. But in my opinion, I think they're gonna test it, an empty car in a safe zone, a safe lot, like at the factory, and maybe places where it's kind of like very predictable or like a studio. Remember when Tesla did the Wii Robot event and the cars were completely empty without drivers and they drove people around, even the Model Ys were driving around without anyone in them, or they had people in them, but no one in the driver's seat. It's gonna be the same with that and then also with the cyber cab or robot taxi that's going to be you know obviously no steering wheel no pedals it's just going to be two seats in full autonomy at its best there's also some talks in saying that they're going to have this for the future of emergency responder vehicles robo taxis partnerships and they're also going to have access to remotely monitor these cars for in situations that may be a little odd or a little weird someone from the outside could look in see where the car is at see what the trouble is and kind of predict or maybe maneuver the car in the right place. And then over time, it's just gonna keep getting better and better. Now in theory, and in my hopes, is that by June of this year, 2025, RoboTaxi or CyberCab will be officially launched in Austin, Texas. And if that's the case, we're gonna have, I guess you could say, a larger, more expanded version of Waymo and Cruise out here in Austin, Texas. The biggest thing with Waymo and Tesla's FSD is that Waymo actually has a geofencing. That means it has to stay in a designated area and only do those routes as of now. I'm sure later on with time, it'll get a lot better and then full autonomy would just be coming down to preferences and taste and maybe the joy of the ride. But I'm hoping by next year, RoboTaxi will be available to the public. So imagine essentially you never really have to buy a car again, especially if it's car for work or just some small, running some small errands, going to the store, groceries, whatever it may be. You just 
kind of like Uber, call the car to pick you up and you and your spouse, girlfriend or boyfriend or your friend, you just go somewhere, meet your buddies up and not have to worry about sleepy drivers, drunk drivers, high drivers, whatever it may be, heart attacks, medical issues. Now, a lot of us are wondering which cars are gonna get it. Essentially, it sounds like hardware four and above are gonna get the full autonomy option. It doesn't sound like hardware three will get it, but hardware four or higher will have that ability to even maybe publicly send your vehicle out to pick up people. Now imagine your family come in from out of town and you can send your car from your house, whether you live 30 minutes or an hour away from the airport, it comes, it pulls them up and they get in and they arrive at your house. That would be a huge differentiator, especially if you own the car, you're not gonna really pay any fees. Now I'm sure airports are gonna come up with something like autonomous parking and this and that, you're gonna pay some type of fee, some type of, some type of way. I know you do. They different registration, who knows, but the fact that basically in the comfort of your own home, someone arrives, you send the car to the airport, and you're good to go. So not only is full autonomy stopping at the current vehicles or the future vehicles, what's really gonna be the breakthrough is cyber cab, and that's gonna be a car that is just made for full autonomy. As of now, it's not gonna have a steering wheel, brake pedal, or an accelerator. It's just gonna be two individual seats, a large screen in the middle, and the ability for you to relax, eat your food, work, or take a nap. Now let's be realistic, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, there are gonna be a lot of red tape to go through. Of course, agencies like the NCSA, those are very valuable, we do need those in place. They're gonna have to make sure that this autonomy is legit and the liability of people getting to these cars, is it gonna really lessen the amount or the risk or the odds of people getting into accidents or is it gonna make it worse? A lot of critics say that because Tesla doesn't use ultrasonic sensors or LiDAR and other technologies, that it's limited by the cameras. And that, I kind of do agree. Because the cameras can only see vision-based and you have you know, people doing certain tests that kind of push and maybe deceptively show the image of what FSD can do. The way I look at it is, when we're driving the car ourselves, we actually only have two cameras, our eyes, right? And we're inside of the car, so we really can't see anything and we just got in really good at judging things with our human mind, which has worked out pretty well. But at the same time, there's a reason why insurance companies are so big is because there's so many wrecks every single day. Just me and my wife, we actually got in a wreck last year and that's what brought us into getting the Tesla Model Y. So it worked out great for us. So Tesla's bet is pretty bold because they're gonna rely on AI and cameras. And they say that that is enough tech and software that they need to make full autonomy become a reality. And we all know from past experiences that Elon likes to stretch things a little further than what they really are. So let's look at the future. If Tesla succeeds, let's just say this summer, and they start to roll out CyberCab or RoboTaxi, and it's actually full autonomy, and it's out there in the public and picking people up and dropping them off, it's gonna be pretty mind blowing to see what they're gonna do just in a year or two from now. It could reshape entire cities. Think about parking structures, parking lots, parking garages, underground, all that stuff, millions and millions of dollars, permits, codes, all that stuff will pretty much be gone. Because imagine never having to pay registration, car insurance, maintenance, gas, charging, whatever it may be. You just go to your job, go to your place you wanna hang out, dinner, restaurant, date, and you get out, don't worry about it. And even if you had a couple drinks, doesn't matter because you're not driving. Get in your car, go home, you're sleepy, not a big deal. And that could really change the game. Not only does it make it more of a pleasant experience to arrive at your destination, but it's gonna limit the risk of death, car accidents, lawsuits. So not only is Tesla's RoboTaxi revolution gonna be pretty mind-blowing, but if they actually succeeded it, whether you're on the fence or not, skeptical, if it comes to fruition, it's gonna be pretty mind blowing. So I would definitely prepare for the future of transportation to essentially change all of our lives. Right now, Tesla's FSD is pretty much full autonomy. I do have to take over occasionally in certain situations, parking lots and stuff like that. So the future of transportation could look a lot different and it could even be a lot better. So stay tuned and see you in the next one.